what kind of title is that for a church, for a religious message, where you're supposed to come and get fed and hear the word of God? What kind of title, what kind of pastor would come up with a crazy title like that? Thumbs and toes. I know some of you want to laugh, so go ahead. <laughs> Hank Brown, every week, posts our title on, what, the Chattanooga or something? I'm sure when the community sees that, they're wondering, has he lost his mind? Thumbs and toes. And I could have come up with some other titles that would have been appropriate for the scripture that I'm going to share. But I really felt like this would maybe get our attention. Because thumbs and toes are very important. Rob, see if you can adjust this. I feel like I've got a little crazy sound on this mic. I don't? Sounds okay? Sound okay back there? Sounds like it's echoing back to me or something today. But thumbs and toes are very important. So what's the big deal about thumbs and toes? Well, let me tell you that um, any military strategist understands that if you can take out the leadership It leaves the rest of the army not knowing what to do many times. Because soldiers do what? They take orders, right? They follow directions. And so if you take out the ones that give the directions and give the commands and give the orders, it leaves the troops not knowing what to do next. They may fulfill the last order. But it leaves them without a leader. It leaves them without direction. It leaves them, leaves them without somebody to show them or teach them or tell them what is next on the agenda. And the devil, I don't want to give him undue credit, but he is a military strategist. And the Bible tells us in John 10 that the thief, speaking of the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And he will do it any way he can. So if we understand that scripture, we understand that his agenda is to steal from you, to steal everything that is precious, everything that means something, your family, your kids, your health, your finances, your relationships. He wants to steal those. He wants to kill and destroy you and everything that is precious to you. That is his agenda. And he does the same thing to individuals that he does to people groups, to nations, to countries. The tragedy this past week of Pastor Andrew Stockland in Chino, California, Inland Hills Church, a mega church, where a 30-year-old pastor took his own life. It's tragic. It's heartbreaking. It's frustrating. It's discouraging. It's puzzling. I mean, we could go on and on about the emotions that we have had, that that church has had, that the community has had and are having and will have for some time. And so what is our response as a people? What is our response as a church? What is our response as Christians? What is our response as as human beings that are on this earth that are struggling with our own problems. One thought that the devil has probably perpetuated in the minds of a lot of people is, well, if the pastor can't make it, how can I make it? 
And so we could talk the entire message about this tragedy. And it is a tragedy. And I want to tell you that pastors do go through storms. I've often said that everybody in the world, everybody on planet earth, ought to be a Christian pastor for at least one year. Christians, Muslims, Hindus, men, women, rich, poor, young, old, everybody, if you could be a Christian pastor for one year, the world would be a different place. However, the Lord does promise that he won't put more on us than we can bear. He does promise that. The Bible also says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And there are many things that we could say about this and be an armchair quarterback on this Sunday morning about the situation, the pastor, and all those dynamics. I'm not here to do that. We need to pray for the church, pray for the family, and pray for others across this country and other pastors and other leaders. But the truth is, whether you're a pastor or whether you're a CEO or whether you're homeless or wherever you are in this station in life, we all have battles. We all have struggles. We all get discouraged. We all have the emotions of human beings because that's who we are. And we have to make up our mind that no matter what everybody else does, as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. And I'm going to do the best I can today. And tomorrow is another day. And tomorrow I'll do the best I can tomorrow. And if I stumble, and if I fall, and if I make a mistake, and if I disappoint you, I'm sorry, but I'm going to do the best I can. First of all, for me, and then for my family, my babies, my children, my grandchildren, and then for you, because family comes first. God is first, then family, and then we reach out and do the best we can to help everybody around us. But I said all that really as a precursor to this message because I think it all it all fits and goes together and I've been pondering this scripture for probably six months it's been on my heart and I really intended to go into this scripture when we were talking about the Ark of the Covenant and the presence of God because if the devil can do one thing, if he can keep you out of the presence of God and away from the fire, the longer you are away from the fire, the longer you are separated from his presence, the weaker you become, the less likely you are to overcome, and the greater possibility there is that the devil will defeat you we must stay close to his presence we must keep our eyes focused on him when Simon Peter got out of the boat to walk on the water when he saw Jesus as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus what he walked on the water he did a supernatural miracle enabled by Christ to do that that nobody else before or since has done except Jesus Wow but when he took his eyes off, he began to sink. And it was not until he fixed his eyes on Jesus again that he was able to rise above the circumstances and walk on the water. So this scripture is powerful. And I want us to talk a little bit about thumbs and toes. What is the big deal about thumbs and toes? Well, I don't know about you, but I like mine. I want to keep them. The thumb is the shortest digit on the human hand. And it moves in a different direction than all the other fingers. We all have one. And it's called the opposable digit. Because thumbs can be moved to touch all the other digits. And when you realize how that works, it, it gives us the ability to grasp something, to hold on to something. Without that, you might be able to hold a few things, but it can easily be pried out of your hand if you don't have a thumb to grasp it, to oppose the other digits and to keep things together. So it's important 
Thumbs are important to us. You probably don't realize until now maybe how many times a day you use your thumb. We use it constantly. It works in conjunction. Oh, we could preach on this a while. It works in conjunction with the other fingers, with the rest of the hand. And we could just pause right here for a moment and say that the Bible teaches us that the body is made up of many members, this body and this body. And every part of the body, this body and this body, is important. There are no little members. This is a little member, but it has a big job, a big responsibility. It's very important to the function of the hand and the other fingers and my arm and my entire being. Could you get by without it? Yeah. People do. People have. But I want to keep mine, thank you. You want to keep yours? And there's a spiritual connotation to it that I'm going to get to in just a moment. Let's talk about the toe. Toes are important. The big toe especially plays a critical role in maintaining your balance. Big toes bear the most weight when you're standing. Maybe you didn't know that. But when you think about how we can stand and walk, how God created us, and gave us the ability to walk, to balance, to stand, to run, to jump. It's amazing. There's no other creature on the planet like us. There are a few that are similar. There are a few that are gifted. There are a few that are, there are many that are different in so many ways. But the toes are important. Big toes add and provide additional leverage to the foot when you push off, when you jump, when you run. When you spin, when you walk up and down steps. So they are very important. Now look at this scripture in Judges chapter 1. After the death of Joshua, the Israelites asked the Lord, which tribe should go first to attack the Canaanites? The Lord answered, Judah, for I have given them victory over the land. The men of Judah said to their relatives from the tribe of Simeon, join with us to fight against the Canaanites living in the territory allotted to us. Allotted to us. Then we will help you conquer your territory. So the men of Simeon went with Judah. Now you've heard me say many times that when you read the Bible, you can't just read the Bible. You've got to find out what the words mean. So let's just jump ahead for a moment and I'm going to back up. The word Canaanites, who were the enemies in this particular time, the name Canaanite means merchants who humble and subdue you. Have you ever been subdued? Have you ever been humbled? Has anybody, have you ever had an encounter with somebody and their very demeanor, their very actions, everything they did was intended to subdue you, to destroy you, to humble you? to push you down, to keep you down, to push you back, to defeat you, to take from you. Well, that's what the Canaanites were. And they were living on the land that was promised to God's people. The word Judah, as most of you probably know, means what? Praise. And so Judah partnered with Simeon, and the name Simeon, another uh, tribe of Israel, means to listen and obey. So let's back up just a moment and read this scripture like that so you can understand what's happening here. After the death of Joshua, the Israelites asked the Lord, which tribe should go attack the people that subdue us and humble us? See how it makes a difference? Their enemies, their intent is to destroy you. So the Israelites asked the Lord, which tribe should go with us to fight these people that want to subdue us and destroy us and humble us? And so the Lord answered, praise. I want praise to go. I have given praise victory over the land. So the men of praise said to their relatives from the tribe of listen and obey. Are you getting this? Join with us to fight against the ones that subdue us and want to destroy us that are living in the territory that was allotted to us. 
Then we will help you conquer your territory. So the men of listen and obey went with the men of praise. See how you have to read the Bible? You can't just read it. You've got to dig into the Word and see what this means. And when you understand what it means, then you can understand what is blocking your promise. Sometimes we need to have a self-evaluation. It is necessary. We need to look at our life and decide and determine, is there sin in my life? Because sin will block the blessings of God. You can pray and say, God, save me. And then if you're living in sin... You're wondering, why is it not working? Why is God not blessing me? Why am I not getting the breakthrough? Well, sin separates us from God. The Bible, says, the Bible teaches us that the Holy Spirit comes to reprove and rebuke sin in our life. It works like this. When you sin, when you lie, when you steal, when you do something that the Bible teaches is a sin, when you feel in your spirit that that little gnawing on the back of your neck or in your ear that says, hey, you shouldn't do that. That is the Holy Spirit correcting you, calling you to repentance. Oh, it's quiet in here now. That's the Holy Spirit saying you need to pray. You need to repent. And if you don't repent, if we willfully sin, the Bible says there remains no sacrifice for sin. So when we do something wrong, we know. Guess what? It's not a surprise. When you, when you do something wrong, when you sin against God, against his word, we know it. We're smart enough. We know it because the Holy Spirit convicts us. So what is blocking your promise? We have to have a self-evaluation, and then we have to align with his, God, with, with his word. When we do that, guess what? Praise, listening, and obeying get together. And defeat the enemy that is trying to subdue you. Because the enemy, the Canaanites, they are trying to subdue you and humble you. But when you are a praiser, they said, who should we send out first, Lord? He said, praise. Put praise out first. Right out in front. Because praise penetrates the battle line. Praise penetrates the front line. Praise penetrates the enemy trying to humble you. Praise penetrates the enemy that is trying to defeat you and knock you down and drive you back. So when you get up in front and you are praising, the enemy has to back up. The Bible even tells us that when you say the very name of Jesus, the demons tremble. So you ought to be, when you're facing a battle, when, when you feel like your, your victory has been blocked and something is hindering you, you ought to stand up and go, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. Just get right up in the devil's face and say, hey, Jesus is alive and well. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is my Savior. And with Jesus on my side, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Thank you, Jesus. That's how you praise. And it drives back the enemy. And then we've got to add with praise. Listen. Oh, did you tell me to do that? And obey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, a lot of us listen. You want me to do what? Oh, no, no, no. Can't do that. No, 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 no. You want me to do what? Oh, I love you so much. You want me to do what? No. And so we listen and we praise, but we don't obey. Mm. Let me give you a verse. The Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You know, and you don't have to make a big demonstration about it. You know, some folks, I mean, they go kicking and Screaming, and I'm not going to do it, no! Other folks just, no. They don't make a big deal about it. They hear it, they just don't do it. Whatever God says, they just don't do it. But he wants us to be praisers, but to listen to his voice, his, voice, his word, and then obey. And when you get that ingredient... The Bible says two are better than one, but a threefold cord is not easily broken. So let's read on. So when the men of Judah attacked, 
the Canaanites, the Lord gave them victory over the ones that subdue and humble them. And the Perizzites, these are the Ite brothers, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, Jebusites, there's a lot of Ite brothers in the Bible. And he gave them victory over the Perizzites, and they killed 10,000 enemy warriors at the town of Bezek. Now, a casual reading, you would say, oh, that's great. Praise God. But you've got to find out who the Perizzites are. You've got to find out where Bezek is. So while they were at Bezek, they encountered the king, Adonai Bezek. And they fought against this king, Adonai Bezek. And the Canaanites and the Perizzites were defeated. Let's see what it means. Adonai Bezek... His name means false light. Let me translate. Let me put it in Steve Ball vernacular. He was a fake. False light. Jesus is the light. God is the light. But Adonai Bezik, the word Adonai means Lord. And Bezik means false light. So he was the Lord of false light. One translation is the Lord of Lightning. Oh, he had, he had exalted himself. He had promoted himself. And Bezek was the Lord of Lightning, the Lord of Light. But the real translation is the Lord of False Light. He was a fake. Flashes of false light, pride, justifications, rationalization. And then the Canaanites, which we already learned, were the merchants who want to subdue you or humble you. And then here's the Perizzites. You're going to love this. Living in unwalled villages. So when you read about the Perizzites, you can read Perizzites just simply as the people that lived in unwalled villages or unwalled communities. And at first glance, that doesn't mean a lot, but let's just see what it implies. So we must, we must attack negative emotion, anger, resentment, offense, and the desire to repay a hurt, even if we have the right to feel that way. And, and many times you do. When you're done wrong... When somebody betrays you, when somebody tries to destroy you, when somebody tries to set you up to get fired on your job, when they throw you under the bus, come on somebody, and we feel justified in trying to get back and get even with them, don't do it. Put them in God's hands. God can do more than you can. So when the tribe of praise attacks the word of God is released and the enemy is defeated. Now let's just back up a moment. When the, when the men of praise attacked, the Lord gave them victory over the ones that subdue them and tried to humble them. And he gave them victory over the parasites, the ones that were living in unwalled cities. Now just, just get this for a moment. Why is that important? Why is that significant? See, so we got it all wrong. In the Bible days, many times they built walls around the city for protection. And if there were no walls, the enemy could come right in. But on the other side, if there are no walls and no boundaries, you open yourself up for demonic attack. You expose yourself... For satanic influence. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. So, the men of praise attacked. The Lord gave them victory over the ones that tried to subdue them and humble them. And over the ones that were living in unwalled cities who had opened themselves up for satanic influence. But God gave praise, victory over that. And they killed 10,000 enemy warriors at the town of false light. And while they were at false light, they encountered the Lord of false light. And they fought against him. And they fought against the ones that tried to subdue and humble them. And the ones that were living in unwalled villages where they had opened themselves up to satanic influence and satanic attack. But God gave them victory over these people. So when the tribe of praise combined with listen and obey, attacks the enemy, the word of God is released and the enemy is defeated. We must get together and be praisers 
and listen and obey. And even if you are facing somebody in an unwalled city who has opened themselves up to strong demonic attack and they are living under the influence of demonic attack and they unleash that on you, you will be victorious as one that listens and obeys and praises God. Does that make any sense? Let's go one step further. So Adonai Bezik, the Lord of false light, the Lord of lightning, he escaped, unfortunately. But fortunately, the Israelites soon captured him. And when they did, they, they cut off his thumbs and his big toes. Now, if you don't know the whole story, that seems pretty cruel because he was the king. He was the Lord of false light. He had deceived so many people. And here's what the Lord of false light said in verse 7. I once had 70 kings. 70 what? Kings, leaders, right at the top, the head, the rulers. Oh, he had 70 kings with their thumbs and big toes cut off because he had sent his army into battle and he had captured the king, defeating the people. And when he brought the king to his house, he cut off his thumb and he cut off his big toe on both hands, rendering him powerless. Somebody say powerless. Ineffective as a warrior, ineffective as a king, ineffective as a ruler. He said, I had 70 kings with their thumbs and big toes cut off, eating scraps from under my table. Now God has paid me back for what I did to them. And they took him to Jerusalem and he died there. It's important to understand that when you are a warrior... You have to hold a sword. Hand me my Bible, Tony. You have to hold the sword. And if your thumb is cut off, you cannot grip. You cannot go into battle. You cannot hold it. You cannot seize it. You cannot hold the truth. If your spiritual thumb has been removed, you cannot grip and grasp the truth, the word of God. If your big toe has been cut off, you don't walk as good. You struggle with your movement. You're off balance. You're tripped up. You cannot go forward fast as you used to. You can no longer run and jump. If you try to jump and your toes have been cut off, guess what? When you come down, you're off balance. You're out of kilter. You're out of sorts. And the enemy knows that if he can spiritually remove your thumb and remove your toes, he can keep you from gripping the Word of God. He can keep you off balance. He can keep you struggling and trying to remain balanced. And you start going for this doctrine and going for this doctrine and believing that it's okay to sin and I can still make it in. I got prayed. I got saved when I was seven years old. Well, are you living for God now? The devil will trip you up and mess you up every way he can. He is a military strategist, and he knows that if he can take the kings out, if he can take the leaders out, how can I make it if my bishop can't make it? How can I make it if my prophet can't make it? How can I make it if my apostle can't serve God. If, if the pressure's too strong, if the pressure's too great, if it's too hard for them, then, then how can I make it? I'm, I'm just little old me trying to serve God and pay my tithes and, and go to church on Sunday. How can I make it if the man of God can't make it, if the woman of God can't make it, if they can't hold on to their sword, if it's, if it's pulled out of their hand because they don't have the thumb, they don't have the opposing digits, if, if, they're, falling, if they're falling on their feet and falling down because they don't have the balance anymore their big toes have been removed. how can I make it Adonai Adonai Abizik false light too many people following false light today there's only one true light Jesus is the light. 
Jesus is the way. There's some other great people that do good, but Jesus is the way. Acts 4.12, write it down. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Only one way. And you say, well, how do I do that? 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Repent. It's just that easy. Repent. You do wrong, repent. Apologize to God. And if you need to apologize to somebody else, do so. If you need to apologize to your Spouse, apologize to your your wife, to your husband, to your mama, to your daddy, to your children. It's all about relationship. First with God and then with each other. And we go through life following the false light, off balance. And did you hear what the Lord of lightning, the Lord of light, false light, Adonai Bezik said? He said, well, I guess what I, I guess I got what's coming to me. I captured 70 nations and their kings. And I cut off the thumbs and the toes of the kings. And he got his entertainment by having them under his table, grabbing for food that they couldn't pick up because they had no thumbs. They couldn't do this. They couldn't grab it and hold it like this. They had to get it between their fingers. They had to take their hands together. Humiliating them. And if you feel like you are under the enemy's table right now. And you're off balance. And you can't seem to get a hold of food. Of nourishment. Maybe he has successfully cut off your thumb. And your big toe on both hands and both feet. And Bezik was wise enough to say, well, I guess I got what was coming to me. He said, I guess God has paid me back for what I did to them. Could I tell you there is a principle called sowing and reaping. Let me give you the Steve Ball vernacular translation. What goes around comes around. You do somebody wrong, you might get by for a while, but somebody else is always going to come around that's going to do you wrong. The enemy wants to remove your thumb and your big toe spiritually. He wants to render you powerless so you can no longer grasp the truth and grip the truth. He wants to leave you where you cannot fight. He wants to steal your praise. He wants to stop up your ears so you cannot hear, so consequently you will not obey. But the Lord said, send praise out first. Get Simeon, get listen and obey to go with praise. Because when you get them together, something is going to happen. He wants to keep you off balance so you will live off balance. He wants you to be unable to walk in victory. And he wants to effectively render you powerless under his agenda, under his table. Scrambling for crumbs just to survive. And you are supposed to be a king. Oh, I need to tell you, you were born to be a king. I don't know who you think you are, but you were born 
to be a king. You didn't hear what I said. It's in the Bible. You were born to be a king. You have God's DNA. You are made in his image. You have his likeness. You have authority that he granted to us in the first book in Genesis 1, 26 through 28, where he said, have dominion and subdue. Subdue the enemy. Subdue death. Subdue poverty. Subdue sickness. Subdue doubt. Subdue fear. He said, I'm giving you the authority. I'm giving you the dominion, the domain. Who has a domain? King Kings have domain. You were born to be a king, to walk in the authority and the power of God. Yet here we are on our knees with no thumbs and no toes, scrambling around just trying to survive and get our last meal. Stand up in Jesus' name. Take your rightful authority. Walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Don't give in to the temptations, don't give in to the fear, don't give in to the circumstances that seem to be drowning you, do not give in, God has the power and he has granted you power and authority to be like him, to be a king and to walk in faith Galatians 6, 6, 7 and 8, it's the principle you reap what you sow, God is don't be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whatever he sows or, or whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. So when we take the responsibility for and expose these mixed motives, the Lord of false light, the fake, that mindset of flashes of false light, of pride, of justifications, of rationalization, just trying to figure it all out our way, they have to flee. And when truth prevails, because you can grasp it, because you can grip it, because you have a thumb, because you have toes for balance, then that spirit, that false spirit of false light can no longer reign in your life. I love this scripture. Praise the Lord, who is my rock. He trains my hands for war because I have a grip. Turn to somebody and say, get a grip. Oh, come on, tell them like you mean it. Say, get a grip. He trains my hands for war, and he gives my fingers skill for battle. He is my loving ally and my fortress, my tower of safety. He is my rescuer. He is my shield. I take refuge in him. I will sing because I'm a praiser. I will sing a new song to you, O oh God. Yes, joyful are those who live like this because they listen and obey. Joyful indeed are those whose God is the Lord. I need my thumbs. I need my toes. Because I'm a warrior called into battle. And whether you want to admit it or not, we're in a war. This is the battle. But the Bible says we don't war and battle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, about spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. you were born to be a king a warrior to defeat the enemy to grasp the truth the word of God and when you grasp the truth oh hear me when I tell you the truth will set you free the truth will free you what does it mean the truth will set you free when you grasp the truth Poverty can have its tentacles around you, but the truth will set you free. He's given you the power to get wealth. Sickness and disease can have its tentacles all around you. And the report is you're going to die. But when you get the truth by his stripes, I am healed. It sets you free. The tentacles and the chains fall off. Whatever it is, broken relationship, pain, trouble, lack of confidence, dealing with fear, Dealing with doubt. Dealing with the circumstances. Circumstances get so many people down. We tend to look at the storm 
and how big and bad the storm is. Oh, I need to tell somebody, storms don't last forever. Storms come, but storms go. Sunshine is above, blue skies above. You need to rise above the storm. You need to go through the clouds. Pilots have this thing, and it's called VFR on top. Visual flight rules. But when the weather is so bad and the, the storm is on the ground and the clouds are in the fog and the haze is so thick you can't see a half a mile in front of you, they climb up through it and get on top and call it VFR on top where they can see. And, and the cloud layer may only be two or 3,000 feet thick. They may climb through in 30 seconds or it may take four or five or 10 minutes. But the truth is if they keep climbing, they will climb above the storm and there'll be blue sky above, just like on a day with no clouds in the sky. That's why they say, I've heard people say, I'm under the weather, yeah? You need to fly through the weather, climb through the weather, get on top. The, the view is much better on top of the weather. Come on, somebody. I need my thumbs and toes. And if the enemy has been whittling on yours and trying to remove them, Rita quoted it earlier. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. And it didn't say he might flee. It said he will flee. Resist him. Submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee. Oh, thank God. When there's nobody to pray for you, when you can't get to the church, when there's not a bishop or an apostle or a pastor or a teacher or a preacher, submit to God, resist the devil, and he has to flee. He has no choice. Thumbs and toes. Sometimes we just need to draw the line in the sand. And instead of daring the devil to cross it, just step over it and say, now, you're on my territory. Back up. Back up. Because I am a warrior empowered by God to defeat you. Father, thank you for your amazing craftsmanship. Because you crafted us from the dust of the earth. And you created us as men and women to inhabit this earth. And you gave us authority and dominion. And you told us to subdue. We thank you, Lord, that even from the foundation of the earth, you knew us in our mother's womb. So we're not here by accident. There's no accident in this place. There's no accident watching online or on by, by television. There's, there's no accident. All of us were created because you ordained it. So, Father, we thank you for the strength to be warriors. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing to step out of the bondage, to grip our swords, and to take our, our battle stance and drive the enemy back one day at a time know that as we've read the last page we win we are victorious through Jesus Christ in your mighty name the Lord I pray in the name of Jesus that you would empower every person under the sound of my voice that they would catch these scriptures and they would get it in their spirit and they would be praisers that listen and obey your word so that we can be victorious and drive the enemy back so that we can as warriors grip the word of God grasping the truth and standing balanced on your word not tossed by every wind of doctrine not pushed down or pushed back but standing firm and standing strong balanced because we're standing on your word one day at a time we're coming out we're coming out we are coming out we're coming out. We've stepped into the month of September, the month of nine, number nine, the month of birthing. And we believe that you are birthing a new thing in the earth. You're birthing a new thing in us. We are coming out. We've been in long enough. We are coming out. We are birthing, 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 birthing in the mighty name of Jesus. We 
are birthing the vision and birthing the plans and birthing those things that you've deposited in us, birthing our ministries and birthing our businesses and birthing our family and birthing relationships. We're birthing to make a difference in the earth realm. In the mighty name of Jesus, the strong name of Jesus. So Lord, grant that wisdom, grant that peace, grant that strength, grant that power, grant that anointing. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. to somebody and tell them you were born to be a king come on Rita tell them like you mean it you were born to be a king look back at them and say I'm a warrior skillfully trained for battle in Jesus name